Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting for the City of St. Peter. It is our regular meeting of April 24th, 2023. We are now called to order. Would all please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next up, we have the approval of the agenda. Are there any revisions or corrections to the agenda as distributed? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda is approved. We will move on to minutes tonight. We have two sets of minutes. The first is uh, the minutes of the April 10th, 2023 regular council meeting. Are there any revisions or corrections to those minutes? Uh, hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved. We have also the minutes of the April 18th Board of Appeal and Equalization meeting. Is there any discussion about those minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those minutes are also approved. Next up, we have a public hearing tonight. The public hearing is regarding Traverse Green Subdivision Number Two Preliminary and Final Plats. The public hearing has been scheduled to consider those plats. Uh, notice of the hearing has been duly published in the St. Peter Herald, and certain property owners have been individually notified as provided by state statute. Uh, it's appropriate to receive public comment on the proposed plats at this time, and action to consider the plats will be considered under new business. First up, we have Ben Baker. Oh, let's see. We're going to open that at 7.01 p.m. Thank you, Mayor Noel and members of the council. Um, notice was sent out to uh, the paper to everybody within 350 feet of this and put on the board at City Hall. Um, what we're talking about tonight is Traverse Green. This is a development that was subdivided and developed in 2016, so seven years ago. Um, it's a little west of Nicollet Avenue, County Road 20, and a little north or directly north of County Road 51 or Traverse Road. Traverse Green was um, the third neighborhood in St. Peter developed on the Building Better Community Neighborhoods um, concept um, as we did, the city did Washington Terrace and Nicollet Meadows back in the early 2000s, both very successful neighborhoods. Traverse Green is now 42% developed and um, averages about three and a half houses a year that are built there. There's 59 lots and currently there's 34 vacant or available. So um, in looking at this subject property, which is showing up on the screen, um, what we did is staff noticed and based on council discussion, um, that there's an opportunity here on the very northwest side of um, the subdivision. We have Cook Street. The last 230 feet of Cook Street actually has a fully developed street with curb and um, gutter, sewer and water, and sidewalks all in place, but both sides are currently vacant. So um, staff uh, decided to take the council's lead and see if this, this could be subdivided. Um, and it was, we were able to do that and that's what's before you tonight. So um, based on interest and the council discussion, we were able to create four larger lots, which are a little bit more in demand right now um, than the lots that are in the middle and around the edges, which are more the smaller and mid-sized lots. Um, so with that, I guess that concludes staff's report and be happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Any questions at this time? We, hearing none, we will move on to public comment. Is there any member of the public who'd like to address the council on this matter? Hearing 
None. We will close the public hearing. It is 7.04 p.m. and we will move on to visitor comments. We have time on our agenda to for visitors to address the Council on Agenda Items. Is there any member of the audience who'd like to address the Council on any agenda item? Hearing none, we also have time for general visitor comments. Is there any visitor who'd like to address the Council on any matter whatsoever? Hearing none, we will move on to the approval of the consent agenda. The consent agenda begins with the uh, memo on page 13 and concludes with the resolution on page 30, that begins on page 34 of the packet. Uh, let's see, the consent agenda includes the following budgeted purchases in excess of $25,000 to Moscow Sports Lighting for Veterans Park Two Pole Lighting System for $40,350 to JT Services for eight double headed street light structures for $63,440 to Nielsen Concrete for citywide concrete projects for $54,305 to Jensen Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram for a 2020 half ton Ram 4x4 quad cab pickup truck for $43,454. Uh, the following license, renewal license applications will be approved subject to payment of the licensing fee in compliance with city code regulations. Uh, we have a temporary on sale license to Gustavus Adolphus College. Tree worker licenses, the list is provided in the packet. Uh, the terms for all of those are May first 2023 through April 30th 2024 a consumption and display permit for Nicollet County Ag Society there's a lengthy list of seasonal appointments which I will not read they are printed in the packet both the name the position and the hourly wage for each individual listed uh, at the bottom of page 34 on to page 36 and the following advisory board appointments as well uh, to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Lee Alger for a Alger, he's replacing a uh, partial term, so that will be year 2021 through 2023, and Joshua Weisenfeld, uh, 2023 through 2025, as well as the schedule of disbursements for April 6th, 2023 through April 19th, 2023. Is there any discussion of items on the consent agenda? Brad. Um, just noting on the consumption and display permit, uh, the end date is saying 331.23, and I believe that should be 331.24 for uh, Nicollet County Ag Society. All right, we will consider that correction to the resolution. Any further discussion? Emily. Um, I had a question for Pete about the lighting for Veterans Park. Do you mm -hmm. have any idea if that lighting is dark sky compliant? Or it is. It well, is it's, it's a... Uh, it's a number of candles on the playing surface. Okay. So it, it'll be uh, operated as as per the park and shut off at 10 p.m. Okay, thanks. Yep. Additional questions? All right, we are considering the resolution as, as corrected. Is there a motion to approve with that correction? So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. The resolution is approved. We have no items of unfinished business tonight. We will move on to new business. The first item is the adoption of a resolution awarding a bid for 2023 Park Row Street and Utility Improvement Project. Pete is here to talk to us about that. Madam Mayor and City Council, um, as you are aware, we have been working with our engineer, Bolton and Mink, to design a project that would uh, complete a few things on Park Row. Um, we were looking at doing curb and gutter replacement by two minutes surface, uh, sidewalk repairs as needed, um, repairing some of the ADA pedestrian ramps, plus making uh, water and wastewater corrections for sanitary service lines along the way. Um, we have held a public meeting followed up by public hearings uh, concerning this project. We have used the bid that's in the document here from Dirt Merchants to calculate the assessments and city share of the cost for the project. And with that, we are asking that on page 38 that you approve the resolution authorizing and awarding the bid to uh, Dirt Merchants to proceed with the project. Thank you very much. Questions for Pete or discussion? Fred. 
Um, so just a quick question. I know the engineer's estimate says 598,000, but that previously you'd been talking in the 700,000 range. Yeah, the so engineer's estimate is just basically for the construction work. Okay. And then the over the cost that you're referencing there was the total project, including some engineering and other okay. costs associated. And with so, it. is there more above this 633 that will take it into this, or is this actually coming in under your expectation? This would no, this would come in as the contractor's price to complete the work that okay. we specified. Okay. Anything further? Hearing nothing, the resolution. Uh, before us, awarding bid for 2023 Park Row Street and Utility Improvement Project is on page 38 of the packet. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Pettis? Aye. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Mayor Long? Aye. Councilmember DeVos? Aye. Councilmember Mooflat? Aye. Councilmember Sharstrom? Aye. Councilmember Ram? Aye. The resolution is approved. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Moving on to adoption of a resolution awarding bid for vehicle exhaust system for the new fire station. That the memo begins on page 39 of the packet. Mayor members, that's mine. Again, as the mayor mentioned, it starts on page 39. We had three bidders for this project. And I'll also mention that this is what I would consider the last major component related to the fire station. We have some furniture and things like that, but everything else is in hand and continues to move forward. Um, so you'll see that we had three bids um, as a part of this project. The recommendation from staff is to award the bid to Rossman Enterprises or MagnaGrip. Um, their bid with a deduction um, related to the electric allowance is 123,000, I'm sorry, $122,355, which is the apparent low bidder. We've reviewed the specifications for everyone and um, this will meet your needs and again, um, provides for the most cost-effective bid uh, as a part of this process. The information or the resolution is on page 40. Um, just to provide some explanation for those folks that might be watching that are not aware, this is the system that connects to the exhaust pipe on trucks. So as they run inside a building, it powers, uh, it sucks the exhaust out of the building. Uh, OSHA requirement and a safety requirement for firefighters and it has been contemplated as a part of the project. This is just slightly over what we originally thought we would be at. By slightly, I mean about three or $4,000 over what we thought originally. Um, and so we feel good about the bid. And the hope is, is that if you provide for an award tonight, that they'll be able to complete the share of the project sometime in early July. Thanks. Any discussion or questions for Todd? Brad. Um, just to note that in the, as Todd pointed out, it's 122,000. Um, in the resolution, has it as 120,355 in two locations on 39. My bad, you are yep. correct. So I just, you already noted it. I just want to make sure the yep. resolution is updated to the 122,355. Yep. Thanks, Brad. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, the resolution before us on page 40 of the packet. Uh, is a resolution awarding bid for fire station vehicle exhaust system project. Is there a motion to approve the corrected uh, resolution? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Mayor DeLong? Aye. Councilmember DeVos? Aye. Councilmember Rupert? Aye. Councilmember Sharstrom? Aye. Councilmember Ram? Aye. Councilmember Pettis? Aye. The resolution is approved. Moving on to adoption of a resolution modifying tax increment financing district number 1-20 by removal of one parcel. That memo is on page 41 of the packet. So you'll see that information coming from Shannon Sweening, from David Drown and Associates, and Sally are here to tag team. I'll take it, and if you have any very serious questions, then we'll pass those along to Sally, if you don't mind. Um, the information is really, from my perspective, a technical repair. Um, I think Shannon's letter to you explains pretty well what has gone on when there was work done and um, TIF districts created in this area. When SOLACE was put together in 2017 and then a subsequent TIF district related to um, creation technologies, which is the 1-23, there had been a change in the parcel numbers due to a replatting. And so this is really correcting that and sorting that out appropriately. Um, this was noticed as a part of the regular state reporting that Shannon does for us as a part of all of your TIF districts. 
And so we took the action to make sure that this could be corrected. The resolution provides for that action. You'll note in the information that we have collected about $2,500 in taxes, um, since the change occurred or the clarification of the tax parcel numbers, and so those dollars will be sent back to the county and then they'll be distributed as appropriate based on the respective tax rates of the school district, the county, and the city. Um, so again, this is a technical repair um, based on a replatting and parcel ID numbers. Questions for Todd? Uh, hearing no questions, the resolution amending the boundaries of tax increment financing district number 1-21 is on page 43 of the packet. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Mayor Gold. Aye. Councilmember DeVos. Aye. Councilmember Hoofner. Aye. Councilmember Sherry Street. Aye. Councilmember Rankin. Aye. Councilmember Pettis. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. The resolution is approved. Moving on, adoption of a resolution authorizing solicitation of bids for condenser unit for the library. And Joey's here to talk to us about that. Hi, Joey. Thank you, Mayor Noel and council members. I am here with you tonight asking you to authorize bid uh, for replacement of our condenser unit at the library. And as you know, uh, we had 20, 275,000 budgeted this year on the equipment certificate to replace the chiller unit that cools the community center. And this was really done um, through our preventative, preventative maintenance program that both services our existing equipment but also recommends for replacement and projects when, when to replace. Uh, with our preventative maintenance program, it is, uh, it is our chiller unit continues to be in effective working order and that is not necessarily the case with our library condenser unit. Uh, we, had we had planned internally to look at replacing that unit in 2024. So I'm here tonight to ask uh, to solicit bids as a swap between the two. Um, and because of the, the price of the expected price of that condenser unit, we would have to go to, uh, to sealed bid uh, for that. And if bids are accepted, then this would come back to you for approval at that time. Uh, really little uh, financial impact um, other than the bid advertisement if approved the swap then would lower the equipment certificate by roughly $100,000 for this year. Um, there's a resolution on page 46 that details this further, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have this evening. Thanks, questions for Joey. Carrie. Uh, have we investigated if there's a long lead time on this unit or even the unit, the swapped unit for the, what was it, chiller? Yes. Yeah. So lead times are uh, out farther than um, ordering an air conditioner at your home unit. However, uh, the condenser unit is expected to be about 15 weeks out, which is mm -hmm. far shorter than a chiller unit, which we've heard depending on um, the unit anywhere from you know six months to up to 18 months. Um, wow. We have also heard though things are getting better in this. So. So maybe next year it'll be a faster turnaround. Yes. Thank you. Could be. Thanks, Joey. Um, Emily. I think I asked this at the workshop, but just wanting to ask it again. If you're looking for or bidding out for like an Energy Star, energy efficient unit for this. Absolutely. The requirements now, um, we are we are required to meet these certainly energy energy efficient criteria with the unit, so that will be in the scope of work. Do you think that'll be better than the unit that is existing? Probably more efficient than the unit that is existing? Absolutely. With the unit being 21 years yeah. old already, the, those units have come a long way, and uh, we are excited for uh, having the opportunity to update some of those throughout the facility. That's great. Thanks. Additional questions? Hearing none, the resolution authorizing receipt of bids for replacement of condenser unit at the library is on page 46 of the packet. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Councilmember DeVos. Aye. Councilmember Hoofner. Aye. Councilmember Sherstrom. Aye. Councilmember Rank. Aye. Councilmember Pettis. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. 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 The resolution is approved. 
Moving on, adoption of resolutions. We have two of them approving preliminary and final plats for Travers Green subdivision number two. And here's Ben to talk about them. Thank you, Mayor Noel and the members of the council. We had the public hearing earlier in the meeting. Um, as the mayor said, there's two resolutions. One, the first one would be for the preliminary plat and the second for the final plat. Um, the city is the applicant in this and what we're looking to do is create four lots, which are 13,000 to just over 15,000 square feet in size, so a little bit larger lots in Traverse Green. Um, how we came up with this is that based on our discussion of trying to create a variety of housing and density options. Um, we do currently have a low number of single family uh, residential lots in town. There does seem to be a demand for larger single family lots. Um, if, if these four um, do become homes here over the next year, that'll open up other homes in town to either rent or for people to purchase. Um, and this subdivision has been developing a little bit slower than the, the previous two um, Nicollet Meadows and Washington Terrace. And so this is just a little bit different idea for us to try to see if this is successful. And we do have 230 feet of the northern part of Cook Street that isn't being utilized that we would like to uh, utilize and create four lots with the sewer and water already in place there. So with that, it would be staff's and the Planning Commission's recommendation to approve both of the preliminary and the final plat. Questions for Ben. Daryl. Um, are is there going to be any utility work that needs to be done, like stubbing out sewer and water to be you know, four lots? Um, correct. So on the west side, we have a little bit larger sewer and water over there because it was proposed as maybe a fourplex, sixplex. Um, so what Public Works is going to do is put a manhole in there that will be charged to the, the new owners, um, and that will help with the, the sanitary. And then on the east side, there's actually four stubs. Um, so they can choose to use the water ones if they want for irrigation, or those would be capped off. So they're in already? Yep. So everything's in, yep. Thank you. Additional questions? Brad? Do you have interest in these properties? Uh, yes, we do. Yep. Mo all four of them are spoken for at this time, so that's good. Additional questions or comments? Hearing none, we will... Uh, that we will take up with the matter of the first resolution on page 51. That is a resolution approving the preliminary plat of Traverse Green subdivision number two. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Aye. 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 The resolution is approved. Uh, our final resolution tonight is on page 53 of the packet. Uh, any questions or discussion regarding this one before we move on? Hearing nothing, uh, is there a is there a motion to approve the resolution adopting the final plat for Traverse Green Subdivision Number Two? So moved. Second. Sorry. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Aye. The resolution is approved. And that was our last um, item of, of business tonight. We will move on to reports. I, the mayor has nothing to report tonight. We'll move on to council members. Are there any council uh, member reports tonight? Carrie. Well, maybe you can chime in, Mayor Noel, but we attended the first think tank for yes. um, Greater Mankato Growth Regional Planning. Um, and there's another one coming up this Friday. Um, and there's no prerequisite, so you don't have to have attended the first one to attend the second one, but it's a really exciting opportunity to be a part of um, planning for the future for this region. Um, and the more voices outside of Mankato and North Mankato um, just enriches the whole process. So um, do you want to share any thoughts? It was it was pretty energizing. It was a great it was a great event. There were um, there's a lot of energy in the room. I think there's a lot of good momentum behind this and um, just a lot of smart people and I think it's great to have St. Peter voices at 
the table when those conversations are happening. So I'd encourage anybody who's available to attend this Friday's. As Carrie mentioned, you don't have to have gone to the first one to go to the second. And if you can't go to either of them, we I would highly encourage folks to fill out that survey. And that should be on the GMG website. Yeah, if you go to Greater Mankato Growth um, website, you can register for the Think Tank and or complete the survey. I just have one more. Yeah. Um, I am going up to the Capitol tomorrow with the Greater Mankato Growth uh, Group. And as far as I know, I might be the only one outside of Mankato, North Mankato attending. Um, and I figured, you know, we just had housing, um, tra the Traverse Green preliminary and final plats on our agenda. We talk a lot about housing as a council. Um, and, and I feel like, it, I, hopefully most of you would agree that that's our economic development pain point. And, um, so plan on bringing that up with our legislators um, and perhaps advocating for some of the what they're considering um, up at the Capitol this last month and a half of session. So, or month. It's maybe just a month left. Yeah. yeah. Not much left. We'll see if it goes longer. <laughs> They've got a lot to do up there. So, um, anyway, I'll report back on how that goes. Thank you. Thanks for representing St. Peter. Any other reports? Emily. Well, one, I just want to encourage citizens of St. Peter to sign up for No Mo May. The registration is still open, and um, it's a great opportunity to give the pollinators a chance to um, to get a head start this spring. So um, sign up for that program. And also, I found out a couple weeks ago that Lawns to Legumes, which is the state program, has opened up for applications again for, like, I think the fall planting. And so if citizens are interested in grant dollars to put in a native garden in their yard i think it's bluethumb.org and you can sign up it's a really easy just click through application to be considered for some grant dollars for that thanks anything else from any other council member <coughs> all right we will move on to reports from the city administrator Madam Mayor, I have two listed and one other one that I want to mention. First of all, the Senior Expo, thanks to Joey and his team, really the Senior Expo. Just a really, it was kind of a drizzly day, but really a wonderful turnout and um, lots of great information that's available um, for that. So thanks to Joey and his team. And the city was well represented, as was MRBT. Your police department was there. and We had a really great time visiting with people and helping provide some information to folks. Um, next, I'd mention food waste compost contractor meeting. This is something that the council's talked about on a few occasions. And so I just wanted to give you a quick update that Pete and Sally and I have met with a couple of folks, certainly the folks from Good Thunder, and we have an upcoming meeting with the folks from SCMC, I believe it is, the Mattawakanen community that does composting, um, both green and brown co composting. So stay tuned, we'll continue to provide you some more information about opportunities in that area. I'm very confident that there is opportunity um, for wood chips, branches, grass, leaves, that type of composting. Food composting still might be just a little further out at the scale that you've talked about wanting to do it. Um, but hang in there, we'll see what we can do. And um, it's important to develop those relationships and potentially partnerships with those groups that can do processing of food waste. So watch for that. Again, we'll continue to provide you some more information. The last one that I have that I did not have on the list was I want to encourage people to continue to watch the hot sheet and our website and other sources of information for the city. As council members know and others may not know yet, um, the council took action at its last regular meeting to hire a new refuse hauling contractor. And so there still are many details about how that transfer and switch over is going to occur. Um, but here are four or five kind of primary things that are going on that we want to alert people to. And again, watch for more information. There's going to be more detailed information come out, uh, come out through a number of different sources. Um, but first of all, if you are a Tuesday or a Wednesday pickup currently, it's unlikely that you will see a change in pickup day. It's possible there may be a few that move back and forth, but generally Tuesday and Wednesday pickups will stay the same. Monday pickups, like where I live, will be spread amongst Tuesday and Wednesday. So hang tight, there'll be a map that comes out and some explanation about when that occurs, but we're trying to minimize impact on folks. We're all creatures of habit, and if I always set out on Tuesday, boy, it'd be hard to flip everyone around, and so we're trying to minimize that impact. So again, watch for more information. 
I also want to mention that everyone will be receiving a 96 gallon recycling Kirby. Most of our folks have that now, but not everyone. Most do, um, but we're going to be providing those to everyone. We really want people to give it a try for a little bit and see if they like it, how it works for them, if their recycling goes up, if they feel better about it. Um, but over the course of the first 90 days or so of the contract, if folks, if it just doesn't work for you, um, then we'll take orders to change those out if you want to go to a 60. Uh, 64 technically we'll be happy to do that but we really want to encourage folks to give it a try we think there's a great opportunity there to increase recycling and uh, give people what they really need frankly we have more people that want to have bigger than people that want to go smaller on recycling so we're trying to accommodate that wish um, we'll have four levels of service going forward um, so this relates to refuse so today we have three levels of service we have a 90 plus gallon Kirby we have a 60 plus gallon Kirby, and then we have the bag system. So you get the, oh, I always want to say orange, but actually the bags are bright pink. Yeah, bright pink. And there are kind of two subsets of pink bags. There's a 30 gallon and a 15 gallon. In the future, we will have four levels of service. 96 gallon for refuse, 64 gallon for refuse. We'll also have a 32 gallon refuse, and then the bag system. So um, that's a great opportunity for people to rethink where they're at in the future and how their needs might have changed over time or continue to change and appropriately size. And of course, if you move down in size, the cost is a little bit less as well, so you might be able to save some money. Um, but we really want people to have an opportunity to understand that. And so again, there'll be some more information coming out with that. And um, I think last but not least, if I didn't mention this before, there's going to be more information coming out. So stay tuned and watch for that. The changeover is occurring um, on July 1st. New Kirby's will be dropped off at the end of June and your current Kirby's, um, the current contractor Kirby's will be picked up in that first part of July. So hang tight, we'll be able to talk about schedule and how all that will move through process, but it should work pretty smoothly. Um, we've been through this before. It takes some cooperation, but we, uh, we think it'll work out really well. And again, we'll try and push out information through a number of different avenues. Do you want to share with folks how they can see these Kirby's? What a great idea. So, so <laughs> currently at the community center, if you kind of want to visualize it, if it's easier to visualize that, you can come down to the community center and take a look. Um, we have all three of the Kirby sizes, the 90 plus, the 60 plus, and the 32 gallon. We will also have them in the entryway at City Hall in another week or so. So you'll be able to come down and take a look in advance. Um, we don't have the pricing solidified exactly yet, but that'll happen within the next couple of weeks here. And again, the change out and information will be hopefully coming at you great guns over the next month or so, so that everyone will have a great opportunity to understand what we're doing there. This is a big changeover, um, but we're excited for those opportunities and you've uh, selected a waste hauler and, and again, um, that information will flow to people in the near future. Thanks very much. Um, we That's the end of our reports for the night. The only item left is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. I will. I will. That'll be the problem.